Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be discussing the Atlanta Falcons offense and what to expect from them. Before we get started, please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow and I hope you enjoy the video. So before we start talking about the Falcons offense in 2020, I want to establish what they did in 2019. So last year, the Falcons were fifth in total yards, third in passing yards, 30th in rushing yards, 13th in total points, and they were tied for the ninth most turnovers. Now, what does that show? It shows that as an entire offense, they were pretty solid, yet running the football, they were horrendous. Also, Matt Ryan was sacked a league high 48 times because he's taking straight dropbacks, waiting for passing lanes to open up. Therefore, offensive coordinator Dirk Cutter needs to incorporate bootlegs and movement, such as play action plays, to keep Ryan upright. Also, they need a run game. That can't be overstated enough. They were 30th last season in rushing yards, and Dan Quinn, Dirk Cutter, and Alex Mack, the Falcon center, have talked about this offseason how the Falcons want to incorporate something called an outside zone running scheme to get the run game going. To use an outside zone running scheme, you really need very athletic offensive linemen, and that's something the Falcons have. Plus, if the Falcons are able to succeed at building a ground game, then they'll be able to use the play action and they'll, they'll be able to full defenses to give Matt Ryan some more time in the pocket. Dirk Cutters talked a little bit about how important the play action game is and how that leads to explosive plays. Last season, Dirk Cutter said that about 30% of the Falcons' play action plays were explosive plays, but as the Falcons are able to run the ball better, more explosive plays and better play action plays will come from it. Also, let's talk about the players that they lost in free agency. They lost Devontae Freeman and they lost Austin Hooper, who were two big difference makers on that offensive unit. Devontae Freeman looked like his juice just wasn't there last season, but Austin Hooper is really going to be missed. Yet now let's talk about the players on this offense that are going to be there for 2020. Let's start with the quarterback, Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan is a borderline top 10 quarterback in the NFL. Some people might have him in their top 10, some people might not but he's a fringe top 10 quarterback nonetheless. He's a four-time Pro Bowler, one-time All-Pro member, and an MVP. Last year, Ryan was pretty solid. He had the most completions out of anybody in the league with 408 of them. He had a 66.2 completion percentage, and he threw for 4,400 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 14 interceptions. Although that's not the Matt Ryan that maybe we saw in 2018, where he threw for just about 5,000 yards, 35 touchdowns, and seven interceptions, that was still a pretty solid year. Anyway, the thing is with Matt Ryan, he needs to stay healthy. He's been more or less healthy his entire career. He's never had a major injury. And if that's able to stay the same, if Matt Ryan's able to stay healthy on, on the field, then that offense will be okay. Ryan is a veteran quarterback. He's a great leader, and he's a really good quarterback that is the heart and soul of this Falcons offense. To trust Matt Ryan's arm to really carry this Falcons team, as the Falcons are a very pass-oriented offense and rely on the pass a lot. So look for Matt Ryan to be the heart and soul of this offense. If he's okay next season, he's able to stay on the field, and I think this Falcons offense will be okay. Now let's move to the running game. As I said, the running game was really, really bad last year, and that's not all due to the offensive line. Yes, the offensive line wasn't performing well, but also Devontae Freeman wasn't performing well. Yet now Devontae Freeman isn't there, and they've got some new offensive line pieces to hopefully help out that O-line. So now let's talk about the running backs they do have. They signed Todd Gurley in for agency, and I love this move. He's a three-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro member, and he's one of the best running backs in the league. Yes, he does have injury problems, but I'll get to them in a second. Last season was not his finest season. He only had 857 rushing yards and 12 rushing touchdowns. But in the years before, in 2018 and 2017, he was a Pro Bowler, and he rushed for a combined 30 rushing yards and over 2,500 yards in those two seasons. Also, he's a good receiving back, too. Last season, he only had 207 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns, but the year before, he had 580 receiving yards and four touchdowns, and the year before that, he had 788 receiving yards and six receiving touchdowns. All in all, though, Todd Gurley is a really solid running back, and although there are injury problems with his knees, he might have arthritis in his knees, um, I think that if Gurley's able to stay healthy and stay on the field, maybe there's going to have to be some sort of a load management on him. But nonetheless, when Gurley is good and he's ready to go, he is one of the best and most dominant running backs in the league. Now, also at the running back position, they have a, a guy who was pretty solid last year in Edo Smith. Smith is not an electric running back. He's not going to be a starting running back for them. But last season, he shined at times. 
Um, he had 22 rushing attempts for 106 rushing yards and a touchdown. And he could also do a little bit of damage out of the backfield. He caught 11 receptions for 87 yards. So he's a little bit of all over the place. And he's just another guy that can be a difference maker in that rushing attack. Also, they've got Brian Hill. He could be the second or third running back. It's really between him and Ito Smith for that second running back role. But last year, he had 78 rushing attempts for 323 yards and two rushing touchdowns. And unlike Ito Smith, he's not as good out of the backfield. But they're both guys that can do more or less the same thing, run the ball, do a little bit out of the backfield, and just be good complement backs to talk early. Yet the Atlanta Falcons offense really makes their money throwing the football, and it's a good thing that they have one of the best wide receivers in the NFL in Julio Jones. In my mind, he's the number two wide receiver in the NFL, only behind Michael Thomas. He's a seven-time Pro Bowler and two-time All-Pro member, and the former first-round pick in 2011, he's really, really solid. Last year, he made the Pro Bowl. He had 99 catches for just shy of 1,400 yards and six receiving touchdowns. And the thing I love about Julio Jones is that he can do everything. He can go up, catch the football. He can be a good red zone threat. He can be a good deep threat. He's a good guy that can rack up yards after the catch. And he's just all around the field, and he makes corners jobs miserable. Last season, as I said, he had 1,400 yards, but the year before he had just shy of 1,700 yards, which led the league. And also, he's always going to be around that 100 catch guy, and he's Matt Ryan's favorite target. So look for Julio Jones, barring injury, to be the leader and the number one wide receiver there in Atlanta. Also, a guy that really shone last year was Calvin Ridley. Ridley was injured in the last few games, and if he hadn't gotten injured, he probably would have had 1,000 yards. He had 866 receiving yards and seven receiving touchdowns on 63 catches, and he's a great deep threat. He stretches the field, and he's a great complement to Julio Jones. I love Calvin Ridley. I think he's going to be a really solid second option for Matt Ryan, and look for him to, if he's able to stay on the field, to continue to evolve and impress in his third NFL season. Now let's move on to the third wide receiver. I think it's going to be in between two guys. It's either going to be Russell Gage or Laquan Treadwell. Let's start with Russell Gage. Gage was a solid player last year for Atlanta. He had 49 catches for 446 yards and one receiving touchdown. He can do a little bit of, of everything. And I think he's another guy that can be a solid wide receiver to pair alongside Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones when the Falcons decide to go to three receiver sets. Also, they did sign Laquan Treadwell in free agency. The former first round pick has not played anywhere near what a first round pick should do, but maybe change of scenery might be good for the former Minnesota Viking. Last season, he had nine catches for 184 yards. And although I don't think he's going to be the number three wide receiver next year in Atlanta, he could challenge Russell Gage for the position. Now at the tight end position is where Hayden Hurst comes in. As I said earlier, they did lose Austin Hooper in free agency, and Austin Hooper was a really big loss for them. Hooper was one of the better tight ends in the NFL last year when he was healthy. He didn't miss a few games. But other than that, he was a great, great player. So Hayden Hurst has really big shoes to fill. Nonetheless, though, Hayden Hurst is a great tight end. Once again, he's a former first-round round pick, and last year he had 30 catches and 349 receiving yards and two receiving touchdowns. If Mark Andrews hadn't really proved it to the NFL that he was the lead tight end there, I think Hayden Hurst could easily have had 50 catches for 500 yards and maybe four touchdowns. And the Falcons have always been a really good team for good tight ends, and I think if Hayden Hurst is able to fit into the system, I think 60, 50 to 60 catches and 500 to 600 yards and four or five touchdowns is not out of the question. So watch out for Hayden Hurst to be that main tight end there in Atlanta. Now let's move on to the offensive line. The offensive line last year was really rough. They gave up 50 sacks and they weren't healthy all the time. Let's start with Jake Matthews, who's the left tackle. Matthews gave up eight sacks last year and he had seven penalties, but he's super durable. He played over 1,100 snaps and he earned a 79.7 PFF player grade, which was really good. Yes, there's eight sacks that he allowed and the seven penalties, so he definitely needs to improve about not drawing as many penalties and not giving up as many sacks. But if he can improve, he's a really solid left tackle to protect Matt Ryan. He's going to be a lock for the left tackle position. At the left guard position is a little bit of a competition here for that spot. They picked up Matt Hennessy in the third round, I think 78th overall, if I'm not mistaken, from Temple. The interior offensive lineman is naturally a center, but he's very versatile. He's played the guard position before, and he could be a guy who could fit in different spots on that offensive line. I think he'll get the left guard position just because he's better than the other two guys on the roster, yet he doesn't have any NFL experience. And the Falcons offensive line has some younger guys, so maybe they don't want Matt Hennessy there too. Yet I think Hennessy is the most talented player that could play that left guard position, 
And he's 6'4", 302 pounds. He's not the most athletic guy, but he's super smart. He's super versatile. And I think he's a really good player to have there at the left guard position. Another guy they could have is James Carpenter. Carpenter is a veteran guy. Um, he's been in the NFL since 2011. Last year was his first year in Atlanta. He played in 11 games, and he's just a veteran guy that could possibly be that left guard there. Also at the left guard position, they could have Matt Gono. Gono is originally a tackle, but he's another burst style guy that could play the left guard position. In 2019, he played in five games, and although Gono's not a great left guard or great offensive lineman, he does provide depth, and he could compete for that left guard spot. At the center spot, though, there is no competition for Alex Mack. Alex Mack was fantastic last year. Um, he earned a 72.1 PFF grade, and although he did give up nine penalties, he only gave up two sacks, which was pretty solid, and he played over 1,150 snaps last season, so he's super durable. And if Alex Mack can just continue to be that dominant threat in the middle of that O-line, that commanding leader of that offensive line, then that offensive line should be better at opening up running holes and keeping that line protected. At the right guard position is Chris Lindstrom. Lindstrom was pretty solid last year when he was on the field, but the former first rounder in 2019 got injured pretty early on. He only played in five games, and after that, it really missed him. So if Lindstrom can take the next step in 2020, staying on the field, staying healthy, and just improving and developing as a younger right guard, then I think that offensive line will be able to open up running holes, keep Matt Ryan upright, and be able to just be a better offensive line unit. At the right tackle position is Kayla McGarry. McGarry wasn't that good last year. He gave up 13 sacks, five penalties, but the one thing he was good at was staying on the football field. He played over 1,100 snaps, and that means he was super durable. Yet 13 sacks allowed is a really big number, which is not something that you want to see from the tackle position. Plus, McGarry really struggled against defending against really speedy rushers, and that's the main reason why you see those 13 sacks on his stat line. Nonetheless, though, in his second year in the NFL, maybe McGarry will be able to continue to develop and really take the next step to be a true right tackle in the National Football League. All in all, expect this offensive line in Atlanta to improve. Not only do they have a lot of depth, but they're getting some guys back. For starters, they're getting Chris Lindstrom back, and they're getting Matt Hennessy, who are going to be able to open up the running game if Matt Hennessy gets the starting job. Also, Alex Mack's a great center, and Jake Matthews and Kayla McGarry are both going to need to improve on not giving up as many sacks as they did last year. McGarry will be able to do better in year two just because off the line, we really struggle in year one. That's normally a normal thing in the NFL, and they get a lot better in year two as they become more accustomed to the NFL pace of play. Look for McGarry to improve against speed rushers, and all in all, if that offensive line can improve, that running game can get going, and there won't be 30th in rushing yards next season. But that air attack, I have no problems with. I think it will be just as good, if not better, than it was a season ago. They might hit a few bumps without Austin Hooper, but I think Hayden Hurst is a very capable guy, not only because he can make plays with the football, but he's a good blocking tight end, too. I think Dirk Cutter has his work cut, cut out for him, really scheming ways to get that run game going. But if he's able to do that, that wide receiving core is really solid. Matt Ryan is going to be the leader of this offense, and I'm not worried about that aerial attack. It's really, as I keep stressing, running the football. And next year, they're going to need to score a lot of points. They're in a very high-powered division with really good offenses. If you look at Carolina, if you look at New Orleans, and obviously Tampa Bay. Those are three solid offenses, and the Falcons can't be behind them if they want to be a dominant team in that division. Also, they need to sort out their defense, but on the offensive side of the football, I think they'll still be a top 10 offense in 2020. I think they'll be lower on the top 10, maybe around 8, 9, or 10, but I think they have the potential to be a top 10 offense in 2020. So for Falcons fans, get excited to watch the Atlanta Falcons offense work in 2020. Now that you've reached the end of my video, I want to thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe as it helps my channel out, and check out my other videos on my channel. Also, you can follow my Instagram, the link is in the description down below, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, see ya.